So I'm Emma. Um, I'm presenting on what I have so far on my thesis work, which is uh, the physical beneficiation of cobalt ores from the Idaho Creek deposit um, in Idaho. Um, so start off a quick overview of what cobalt is. Um, so cobalt is an element that's primarily used in batteries. Um, we've seen a large uh, increase in demand in cobalt uh, due to the increase in demand of electric vehicles, um, though um, the electric vehicle industry is trying to move away from cobalt batteries. Uh, we can expect for the next five, 10 years that it will be a major driving force in its demand while they work on that. Um, it's also used in high strength alloys, uh, commonly used in wind turbines, um, jet engines, and it's also used in strong magnets due to uh, its high resistance to heat. Um, <clears throat> the US considers it a critical material, which means that we need it, we, it quite badly but it's our supply chain for it is not very secure um the u.s imports um over 80 percent of all cobalt um and cobalt um products that we need um for our industry um the largest deposits for cobalt um are located in the central africa copper belt uh primarily the democratic democratic republic of congo um it's all it, it is mined as a secondary um, product, um, with copper being the primary product it comes out of. So it's very the production of cobalt from that area is very very dependent on uh, what the copper uh, industry looks like. Um, there's also significant uh, cobalt mining done in well, not there's significant reserves in Australia, though not much mining of it is done, and that's comes that's a, also a secondary product that comes from nickel. Um, cobalt, in general, is almost always produced as a secondary mining product. There's only one primary cobalt mine in the world, um, and that's in Morocco. Um, and then all other cobalt comes from recycling, though there's not that much in the stream right now. Um, so this is a map of some of, of cobalt deposits in the world. As you can see, there's a very high concentration of that um, in Africa. Um, and there's also quite a bit of it <clears throat> in, in Australia. Um, the singular primary cobalt mine um, is this one, um, and then today I'll be talking about the Idaho uh, cobalt belt, which is right up here. Um, so the Idaho cobalt belt is located in central eastern Idaho. Um, it's the U.S.'s largest primary source of cobalt. Um, there's been several mines in the past in this area, though none currently active right now, um, the largest of which was the Blackbird mine site, which was a copper cobalt mine um, that ran from 1902 to 1968. Um, and this area is generally classified as a hydrothermal deposit. Um, so so scope of this project, because I'm not the only person um, on working on this project that mines right now. Um, so the goal of this project was to create an economical cobalt concentrate from the Idaho Creek uh, deposit. Um, this area is owned by Electro Battery Minerals, um, and they currently have a cobalt uh, refinery um, up in Ontario, Canada. But as the as it is right now, the cobalt ore is not is not economically viable to ship it from Idaho to Ontario. So what me and the two other grad students working on this project are doing is trying to figure out a way that it, the cobalt ore can be concentrated into a more economical product at the mine site in Idaho and then shipped up to um, <clears throat> Ontario. Um, so the testing we've been doing um, includes flotation, several different bene physical beneficiation techniques and pyrometallurgy in hopes of achieving this goal. Um, and then today I'm going to be talking about the be <laughs> physical beneficiation side of it, as that's my uh, primary focus in this project. So first, um, we sent um, some ore up to uh, the company Tamra um, to see if we could get any of their scanning um, technology um, to work. So with this ore, <clears throat> with this technology, um, they're taking X, um, X-ray um, transmission uh, scans of the ore as it goes along the conveyor belt, um, and then by knowing the density of the materials, um, like the gang, and then our target material, um, 
we can um, determine um, what we would call waste rock and then what would be our like economical rock. Um, so um, electro battery materials sent some rock to us already classified that we could then set to Tamara. So all of the red is what we consider low density or waste material. And then all the blue and green is what the uh, high density or um, economic material. Um, and this is when they sent it to us, it was classified as waste material and high cobalt ore. Um, and these are just some images we got from that. Um, so the goal of this, of doing this sort of scanning and seeing if this technology would work with our thing, our project, um, is that it could um, drastically de decrease the amount of waste um, rock that we put through our crushing and grinding process, which um, if we were able to take this out um, as it's one or two inches compared to 100 microns would save a lot of energy and time <clears throat> in our project and in the um, in a general flow sheet. So the first technique that um, we looked at for this um, physical beneficiation process was magnetic separation, which as the name implied is um, a separate separation techniques that um, rely on the magnetic properties of materials. Um, so far, all the testing we've done has been with a wet high intensity magnetic separator, also known as a WIMS. Um, <clears throat> so how this works very generally um, is that the um, there is a matrix in this box right here um, that can be various sort of things, ball bearings, expanded metal, expand, expanded metal mesh, uh, steel wool, uh, depending on what size of the material you're putting through. Um, and then you pour um, your slurry um, in the funnel at the top while um, <clears throat> you have a magnetic field running through it. Um, the <clears throat> magnet, um, your magnetic particles or the particles you have that would respond to a magnetic field um, stay within the matrix while your non-magnetic go through the bottom and then you can rinse out the magnetic material once you turn the machine off. Um, so <clears throat> with all testing that we did, we ran two different ores, um, a run of mine ore that had a particle size with an 80% passing of 100 microns, and then a bulk flotation concentrate that had a P80 of 75 microns. Um, <clears throat> and then test with this were run in a um, magnetic field range of 0 0.3 to 1 Tesla. So um, testing is still ongoing with this, but some primary results that we've seen um, is that the cobalt primarily reported to the non-magnetic fraction, um, which was expected as in this case, um, <clears throat> most of the cobalt is within pyrite, um, has substituted in for some of the iron atoms, um, and pyrite is non-magnetic, so that's about what we expect. Um, for the run of minor, the lower magnetic intensities, um, about double the grade of cobalt we had, but it was very low recoveries, less than 5%, five, 5 and that's just due to the makeup of the particles that we had. Um, and then with all testing that we had over a magnetic flow strength of 0 0.5 Tesla, um, there were minimal changes in the grades and recoveries. This was also about expected. Um, and then bulk flotation concentrates um, saw no obvious grade increases in either fraction um, and just generally poor recoveries overall. <clears throat> so as this seems a little bit pointless, as we know, nothing in the ore is magnetic. Why would we test for magnetic um, response? Um, well, one of the other students is testing um, pyrometallurgy and the thermal decomposition of the pyrite. And this is a generalized flow sheet of how pyrite decomposes. Um, so pyrite will, will decompose the trollite, which is also non-magnetic, but as it's decomposing, it, can, it temporarily turns into pyrotite, and pyrotite is magnetic and has <clears throat> a pretty um, good magnetic response. Um, so the goal is, is that I once he produces, produces enough product for me to test, did that turn off? Mm -hmm. Hello. 
<laughs> All right. If I'm too quiet, <laughs> yell at me. Um, so the hope is, is that once the other grad student produces enough product for me to use, um, I can run some testing and we're hoping to see a better magnetic response with that um, material. Um, and that's ultimately the end, the end goal with this uh, section of testing. <clears throat> so I've also done uh, some gravity separation um, techniques and gravity separation basically using the density or the specific gravity of materials in the ore uh, to, achieve an, to achieve a separation. Um, and so far, all of my gravity testing has been done with heavy liquid separation, where we use a liquid that has um, a specific gravity greater than water, um, preferably in between the target material and the gang material um, <clears throat> to achieve a separation. Um, so traditionally, heavy liquid Heavy liquids can be pretty toxic, um, but in this case, we're using a sodium polyton state, um, which is much less toxic than traditional heavy liquids. Um, but as you increase the um, as you increase the specific gravity of it, um, the, vis the viscosity goes uh, way up to the point where you can't get anything to uh, settle to the bottom. Um, however, um, this can be overcome using a centrifuge. Um, so this image here um, is one of the first uh, heavy liquid separation tests I was able to um, achieve some sort of separ visible separation with and I under normal gravity. Um, so the top fraction um, is like the light or float fraction and that's basically um, primarily gang material. And then at the bottom, you can see the um, <clears throat> sink um, or heavy fraction. And that is where uh, most of the pyrite ends up. Um, so testing I run a, run a minor showed that um, the majority of the cobalt reported to the sink fraction, which is what we would expect um, as pyrite has a specific gravity of around five, while the gang material in this case, which was primarily quartz, um, is in the 2.7 range. Um, and then there was, <clears throat> and since most of the cobalt reported to the um, sink fraction, with high amounts of the gang material being removed. Um, we had a very high, <clears throat> um, we had a very high um, recovery and grade. Um, this on? No, just Oh, oh no. Yes. <laughs> Um, so this image um, here is some dried uh, sink and float fractions. Um, on the left is the sink, and on the right is the float. Um, it's kind of hard to see in this image, but um, the float fraction is noticeably lighter um, in the lab, and you can actually see the pyrite particles in the heavy fraction, which is I think is very interesting. And then the final testing that I did um, so far is electrostatic separation, which is where we use the conductivity of minerals uh, to achieve some sort of separation. Um, so since I've never heard about this before, I thought I'd explain it a little bit more as it's a little weird. Um, so in electrostatic separation, the conductive um, particles move towards an electrode that is inside the machine. Uh, you can just about see it up here um, where these two bolts are, um, while the non-conductive stick to this drum in the center. Um, and then as the particles drop onto the drum and the, the drum is rotating, the conductive particles fly off into the far bins while the non-conductive stick on the roll and then drop off at the bottom. Um, so we decided to test this as pyrite is a semiconductor, um, while most of the gang materials are non-conductive non or insulators. So we believe that this could have, at least in the run of mine or um, a pretty good chance of achieving some sort of separation. Um, so this was, so in the run of mine ore, this was a very effective at removing the gang material. Um, we had high um, recoveries and uh, grades um, with copper and with cobalt and copper. Um, 
but when tested with the bulk flotation concentrate, um, it was there's a minimal um, effect, um, which was probably due to the fact that flotation removed most of the gang material. Um, so in this image, um, these are the uh, four steps, I guess you could say, um, of the electrostatic separation. Um, and in this experiment, the bar three um, buckets were considered concentrate. Um, and the far left one was considered the, ta um, the tailings. Um, and as you can see, um, the material gets progressively lighter um, as um, it moves more towards the tailings, which was about expected. Um, so just some general conclusions on, so far in my testing. Um, <clears throat> the gravity and electrostatic separations can be used to achieve some sort of separation between the cobalt-bearing um, materials and the gang um, in the run of mine ore in the bulk flotation concentrate. It's much less effective um, as we're primarily achieving uh, separations between the cobalt-bearing and the gang material. Um, there was a there was minimal response with the magnetic separations with either of the testing material uh, as expected again as there's no real magnetic material um, in what we were testing as at the time. So generally, physical beneficiation can be used to achieve some some degree of separation, but on its own, it's not quite effective um, enough to make anything that's considered economically viable. So some future works, as I'm not quite done with my testing just yet, um, the main one being running some magnetic separation tests on a thermal decomposition, decomposition product. Um, we're also working on, I'm also working on creating a washability curve with sodium polytung state, um, just to see what the um, ideal, I guess, specific gravity for the sodium polytung state would be to achieve the maximal separation. <laughs> um, and then if time allows, we, um, I might do some more testing with different gravity separation methods after I've done all my testing with sodium polytungstate. Um, and then we may try and do some testing with flotation with the my physical beneficiation products just to see if that has any um, effect on what um, happens in the flotation. Any questions? I don't mean it's like so maybe you said this, mm -hmm. but what is the current concentrate grade that they've been able to produce for the convention on you? What's the grade you're getting out of your test? And what target grade do you need to be at? I mean, how far away are you from some reasonable system? Okay. Um so the grade in the ore is 0.3% cobalt. Um, and previous testing has achieved a grade of about 1.8% cobalt in concentrate. in concentrate. And what do you need to be able to ship it? Um, the company, well, between my advisors and the company, we're looking at about, our goal right now, minimum is 2.35, but we'd like to be at least three to four. Um, it's not huge, but that's a two or three times what you're currently getting. Yeah. Any electrostatic separator? Did you mm -hmm. have a lot of magnetite with your concentrate? Um, it was dark because the pyrite wouldn't be right. Yeah. Um, possibly um, in the test in the mineralogy reports that I've received, I haven't seen a whole lot lot with the uh, magnetite. Um, but just with the testing in general, um, I've noticed that the fractions that are higher in cobalt tend to be darker, um, just due to um, the <laughs> words, just, <laughs> just due to um, what I believe where, where the cobalt, like the cobalt and the pyrite kind of associate with. This presentation takes me to conclusion said that um, Magnetic separation works better on the run of mine than the uh, product of rotation. Mm -hmm. Was that absolute or relative? Uh, um, you, if yeah. you're talking about rotation, it means that you're actively 
yeah. increase in grades. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so it, um, it's relative. I was looking more at the, the increase of the grade or like right. the recoveries. Uh, generally, with the bulk flotation cost grade, recoveries were lower. Um, and the grades increased very little compared to the increase that I'd seen from the Renamai. Uh, generally, with the physical beneficiation techniques I've done so far, um, a lot of the increase in grade has been to the um, removal of gag material, um, which flotation to a degree is already done. So. And when you went to the two step, did you get to your target um, concentration or not? Um, no. Um, so right now, um, we've yet to put together all of our steps um, for a, to make to try and make some sort of economically viable flow sheet. Um, so um, I'm what the um, most likely scenario is is that. Only the magnetic separation will be used, uh, and that'll be after the thermal decomposition. Um, so it's kind of unfortunate that I haven't been able to run that yet, but it's, I have to wait for it to go through flotation, through the de thermal decomposition, and to me. So right now, it's currently a waiting game to get my stuff. Um. <laughs> Do you know if paratite is para or paramagnetic? What is paratite? Paratite. Um, I believe. It is paramagnetic. Well, I don't know. I may have missed that, but mm -hmm. uh, down to which size you will try and find the run of mine before you run your. Um, so the run of mine is a P80 of 100 microns. So 80% of the material will go below 80 microns. Yeah, nice talk. Um, I know it's not your focus in, on the pyrometallurgy, but I'm yeah. just curious if you know how they're controlling the decomposition and not making the undesired product. Um, yeah, I can talk briefly about that. Um, so currently, um, his testing is doing looking a lot at the time and the temperature. Um, so he's testing various, um, various different combinations um, to see um, what products he gets. Um, Today, actually, he got some data back about it. Um, and he was able to produce some pure tight at 90 minutes at about 600 degrees Celsius, I think is what he said. In what atmosphere? Um, in a, well, I want to say it's nitrogen atmosphere, but he's also testing carbon dioxide. Yes, thank you. Yeah. What's the, what's the most challenging part of your thesis so far? <laughs> most challenging part? Um, this is going to sound kind of bad. Um, it's mostly, um, it's been very interesting working with two other students who are also doing their studies at the same time because I'm testing everyone's products um, for every test. So it's been a lot of waiting for other people to get their stuff done, um, which has kind of impacted my time <laughs> when, I, when I would like to be done. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Emma. Hi. Uh, uh, thank you. Can you please um, explain about the, the character of this mineral and how the cobalt occurs in the pyrite and that pretty much explains some of the difficulties that you've been having on this project. Sure. Um, yeah, so the cobalt in this... Um, and the copper. And the cobalt and the copper. <laughs> um, so the, coal, the location of the cobalt in this um, deposit is interesting as it's not in a typical cobalt mineral. It's actually in pyrite where it has replaced some of the iron. Um, so the some of the difficulties we've been having in general is separating the cobalt from the copper, um, as we need a, a much of the testing we're doing isn't really changing the mineralogy of the ore, um, which we would need to do in order to separate the cobalt and the copper. Um, so that's where the thermal decomposition is very important, as that's really our only uh, mineral mineralogical change. Um, but this is also a very desirable deposit because there's not much arsenic, which is a very common um, trait in uh, cobalt deposits. Um, so if you can get this to work, um, it kind of eliminates one of the difficulties that we would have. Any 
So what are the other two students doing? Um, so the other two students, um, one is fo focusing mainly on flotation. Um, he's doing some differential flotation right now. Um, and then the other is focusing on the thermal decomposition. So is that is that different than roasting? So if this was if this was golden pyrite, mm -hmm. you roast it, right? And then yeah. Leach it. Um, I think it's very similar, if not the same. Um, it's always been referred to as thermal decomposition. Um, so. so I just want to, it's not roasting because they don't want to oxidize because of permitting for making sulfuric acid for making the oxygen. But it could be viable if that wasn't the issue. If the permanent, yes, they could roast and leach if that was a plain environmental obstacle. Yeah. In other parts of the world, they would roast this material. So is this a is this an idle thing? Is it an existing permitting thing? Do we know what that's all about? Um, so the United States has always been very uh sting stingent with their permitting. Um it's always been very been pretty difficult. Um so it's the United States thing basically. I don't particularly um as far as I understand, I'm not. I don't come from mining background. <laughs> so, I mean, I love, the, I love the bigger context around these projects. So, there's always context. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I always think it from a business perspective, in addition to technical, I'd be wondering what I could do to, if that's such a valuable deposit, for example, except mm -hmm. they can't process it. <laughs> then, to lay a bit of fluff, I would think they'd want to take a look at what they could do to, to, to put an asset plan in there and not have any. You know, there's a lot of uses for acid in the United States. Anyways, this used to be first cobalt, correct? Yes. They changed their name about eight, ten months ago. Just some background. This project started because I took a group of 15 graduate students to the Prospectors and Development Association of Canada meeting <laughs> three years ago. And when I do that, I, I, I set up meetings between the cohort of students and companies. And one of the students was following for Scobalt. So we had a meeting with us. And they didn't know much about Colorado School of Mines and we got to talking and this project was an outgrowth of that. Ooh. It's very cool how this all happened. So you never know where these things are going to come from. That's my point. I'd love to see this be successful somehow. <laughs> I don't own chairs in the company. <laughs> it's very, very yeah, I just want to I just want to say, yeah. It's kind of funny, but this problem has been going forever. Yeah. And then we can start through. I told you, the only thing I was just talking about, we need to change the whole lot of that. Great job. What are the numbers? It was called what? Tori numbers? Really? Thorium first, yeah. Around seven hundred. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, you said that one of the issues with really transporting um and the ore and it, like that was the reason that you have to upgrade it. How would this be done? Um, and how applicable are methods if like your refinery was right next to your mine theoretically? How would they treat it um and what ability do you have to look at their process and kind of kind of small scale it to just have those operations at the mine site so how would we get it up there and then if it was next to what we had going on right now yeah um so transport would pr probably primarily depend on uh, how much they're producing um, we haven't really discussed much about how it would be transported. Um, I would imagine it would have to be either train or truck, depending on how much is produced and what exactly costs are with that. Um, if they were right, if we were able to process, like completely refine it right next to the mine, um, we could probably, probably get a, Way with a slightly lower grade just because we wouldn't have the cost of transport um but <clears throat> it would ultimately uh really depend on um, the problem putting it right next to, like say processing in the united states is that um 
the laws um, depending on what it may on what we are what they can and cannot do it may differ between the United States and Canada and that may have a big impact on what can be done but are there any unit operations that are typically associated with say a cobalt um, refinery I know you said there's not a lot of primary cobalt production yeah. but um, are there any unit operations that can kind of be taken from a refinery setting and put into the mine setting to get um, that upgrading that you're looking at? Um, so in situations where transportation isn't an issue. Mm -hmm. um, probably what we would do at the mine would probably stay at the mine, even if the, it was right next to each other, just because um, once we start getting to the refining point, it starts to become aqueous, um, and lots of liquid handling, um, which um, is kind of a, makes it much more hard to transport, okay. if that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Uh, uh, the question is, is yeah. then I'm clicking out there. Yeah. Um, you talk about recovery, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and in consideration, you have to combine recovery with the gradient, right? Yeah. So if, let's say you are in this scenario where your core concentrate rate you get for that few percent of recovery is 50%. Yeah. Is that acceptable? Um, well, in this, um, I guess testing, um, we're primarily focused, it's basically pure focus on the grades, not the recovery. Um, so we could produce something that's 4% with 20% recovery, and that would be considered we've reached our target. But in the real world, um, you need to balance your grade and your recovery. Um, so we could achieve our goal, but it may not be actually be implemented just because having such a mind would not be a really economic it's the grade of the ore that you're transporting not how much you hit the process to get it but at the end of the day you're finding your recovery is 20 percent <laughs> well it's all about the head grade right now the location rates are are plus 95 percent recovery then the bulk flow on but when she gets done with the you know with trying with the Partial reduction or whatever it is that we that we follow, that she follows, the students do. Um, those recovery numbers are not at all fixed. Uh, looking for a path to get a uh, somehow to get a high enough grade and then back off probably in another phase to try and get the recovery up to that or something viable. Like well, yeah, it's that's that really cool is that that sortation at the beginning. You know, if you can get rid of 50% of the weight, you saw the, the red, the blue, I mean, it's crazy the, the XRT um, uh, sortation sensor results. <coughs> We're still in the middle of uh, getting those analyzed. And, and the, the student that's doing the sortation is also focused on that part. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks.